Try to listen more than you talk, believe it or not. Sometimes just listening without giving actionable advice all the time is okay. Hi, Dr. Dom, it's me, Sanaya, again. So I have a question about how when my parents are stressed, I try to help them, but I don't really know what to do. You're obviously incredibly observant and empathetic because you're noticing that your parents might be somewhat stressed, maybe anxious, maybe a little overwhelmed. I just wanted to reiterate that I am fine. It could be the holiday season. It could just be the time of year. But I want you to remember something. It's very unlikely your fault. It's very unlikely that you're the reason that they're stressed. And what a lot of people do, especially empathetic people and observant people and kids, they'll think because my parents are stressed or they're not acting right or they're overwhelmed, did I do something wrong? Is it something that I'm doing? Maybe I'm not good enough or what it might be. And, and I want you to get away from that because individuals have their own stressors and to recognize that's very, very important. And it's probably not you. Daddy had a hard day at work. Daddy was up all night performing third grade brain surgery. The next thing that I would say is feel free to communicate openly if you feel comfortable doing that. A very good way to do that is just say what you see in a non-judgmental, in a non-critical way. So you could say, hey mom, hey dad, I've noticed that you've been a little stressed out lately. Is there anything I can do to help? And what you're doing there is you're acknowledging that you've noticed that their behavior is a little bit changed, but you're also acknowledging it in a way that maybe you can offer some assistance think they might like that. When people talk about their problems, try to listen more than you talk, believe it or not. Sometimes just listening, just being there and listening to someone talk about how stressed they are and the problems that they're having without giving actionable advice all the time is okay. Sometimes just listening is just as important and you're really helping if you do that. The other thing that I suggest is express love and understanding. Maybe you can make a card. Maybe you can make a little poster. Maybe you can help with the chores. Maybe you can help with the dishes. These are things that might show that you want to help and that might, in and of itself, help them out to deal with some of their overwhelming emotions. Well, I'm gonna go get dinner started. Dad, wait. You do so much for us. Let us cook dinner for you. So you're noticing that your parents are stressed. Guess what? I bet you it's making you stressed. It's almost impossible to not get a little uncomfortable with that because again, we're human and we wonder what's going on with these people we love. Why are they so uncomfortable? Remember something, take care of yourself. Make sure you're still doing the things that you enjoy. Try not to put too many of those things on hold to try and address someone else's problems. Focus on yourself too. Don't forget about that. If you ever feel that in your family, things aren't going so hot and maybe there's a lot of fighting, maybe there's a lot of overwhelmed feelings and stress and anxieties, maybe there's anger. If you ever feel that there's an unsafe environment or that you even feel concerned about the safety of someone else in your family, I really encourage you to talk to a trusted adult. And this could be a teacher, a counselor at school, maybe an aunt or an uncle, maybe another parent that you trust. But if you ever feel unsafe or you feel that someone else might be unsafe, talk to a trusted adult and this way they can intervene and get you and that loved one the help that they need. How can I keep the holidays happy for my kids? There's been a lot of change and I wanna make sure this is a happy time of year for them as it has been in the past. The holidays. So this is a really ironic time of year because this is the time of year that we're supposed to or should be festive and having a really good time and enjoying ourselves. And they tend to be some of the most stressful times of the year. I had a smile on my face from the moment I woke up. So what do we do to fix that? Because we want them to be festive and fun and happy. And when we have children, sometimes it's a little bit more stressful. I've got a Lego Millennium Falcon. And I burn my arm in the oven. When we look at festivities and we look at the holidays, I have a couple of pointers for you. Number one is what we see in behavioral health is that families that create traditions and families that keep traditions tend to have better holidays as far as satisfaction and fun. And the reason for that is because creating traditions builds anticipation and adds meaning to the whole thing. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. So if you guys have a family tradition, keep it up. Make sure you stick with those. Don't let those slide. If you don't have any family traditions, 
think some really cool stuff that you would do on a regular basis for those holidays. On Hanukkah, uh, we sing, um, dreidel, 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 I made you out of clay. Now, you know, I can talk about Christmas because that's my culture going and cutting down a Christmas tree every year, setting up the Christmas tree, baking and making certain foods. These are all traditions that the kids will eventually look forward to, create anticipation and allow meaning in those holidays. The other thing is involve your kids. Now you're probably gonna be stressed out around the holidays because you have food to prepare and things to buy and shopping to be done. Had a breakdown? <laughs> bon appetit. Involve the kids involve the kids in even some of those decisions on which gifts to purchase and how to decorate and which decorations to adorn the house with which meals to make and when it's time to cook maybe involve them in the cooking i promise you that this might sound stressful initially but when you do get them involved they are going to feel so much better and happier and they're going to carry that forward to their children someday you can light the candle on the canara Umoja, auntie. <laughs> Umoja, baby. Now, something that tends to go out the window around the holidays, and this is for various reasons, we lose structure. When we lose structure in our lives, we tend to feel a little bit frantic and overwhelmed. I'm stressed and I'm scared. And guess what happens around the holidays? The kids are off of school. They don't have that same structure. Maybe we have some time off of work or maybe things change with our work schedule. Do the best that you can to maintain structure. And, and that means going to bed and waking up at the same time, eating meals at the same time of day, continue your exercise routines, continue your daily routines as much as you can, even though you're gonna have other responsibilities with the holidays, because that structure will set a nice foundation and help you feel actually a little bit less stressed. And then you know what? I'm gonna round this whole thing off by saying a little bit of mindfulness, be present, enjoy the holidays, be there for that moment because they're fleeting. The holidays are about love, they're about togetherness, and they're about joy. So have fun and don't forget that. Come on, let's go celebrate Kwanzaa. Yeah. 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 Hi, Dr. Dom, I'm Amira. Um, I'm worried about someone in my class and I don't know exactly what to do. Do you have any advice? Especially around the holidays and, and times where people really focus on family, people can tend to feel a little bit lonely and they might feel a little bit isolated. Actually, Lucy, my trouble is Christmas. Instead of feeling happy, I feel sort of let down. If you notice that a friend at school or a peer is struggling, maybe at home or even in school, your concern and your compassion is gonna go such a long way. You would be so surprised if you notice somebody going through a tough time and you just simply offer a listening ear. Amy? <sighs> yeah. You okay? No, Glenn, I'm not okay. I am dealing with a lot today. And a great way to approach that is, hey, I've noticed you've been having a difficult time and I care. Would you like to talk about it? It's a real easy way to sort of break that ice and start a conversation and then just listen. But knowing that you're there and offering assistance and being supportive can be so incredibly empowering. If they open up to you, and they decide to tell you some of the stressors that they're going through, you can provide support, you can provide reassurance. You don't always have to give advice. Don't think that you need to solve their problems. I'm telling you again, just by offering some reassurance and some supportive listening, it's gonna go a very, very, very long way. If you know someone is going through a hard time socially, Try to include them in social activities. So if they're your friends at school and they're your peers, try to bring them into some social activities that you're involved in because being social helps tremendously when people feel isolated, alone, and misunderstood, which is what happens when people are going through a tough time. You need involvement. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Me? And then also most importantly, at the end of all this, I want you to think about encouraging someone to seek help. If it seems serious, if it seems harmful, if they really seem to be having a hard time, encourage them to talk to somebody, a trusted adult, whether it's a teacher, a counselor, or a parent. And if you feel concerned about their safety, feel free to reach out to somebody, again, a trusted adult, to say, hey, I think so-and-so might be having a hard time, and you know, I just wanna let you know. And listen, just by asking that question, you're an amazing friend, and think about some of those points, and you're gonna do just great.